Welcome to the podcast, Emma. I am so excited to have this conversation because you have something that just came out that I can't wait to dive into. I know it's exciting times, isn't it? Yeah. So this exciting thing that just came out is you just launched a book. And for my listeners, they know that I'm working on a book. So I want to know all the things about this new book that came out. Oh, wow. Definitely exciting times then, Jennifer, to be fair. But yeah, so I've just launched a book and it's called Mental Wealth. And it's a book that it's based around how to look after your mental health and well-being all of the time and not necessarily waiting until you become unwell or you're faced with that challenge that we're all very often faced with and just by maintaining your well-being at an optimum level whenever maybe something does happen you're faced with a challenge or issue that you've kind of banked you've reserved this mental wealth of activities and built this resilience that you maybe don't hit the floor as hard and the book is it's some of my wisdoms and knowledge that I've picked up over the years. I've worked over two decades in mental health managing services and just over the years trying to think of different perspectives, what's working, what I believe isn't working very well. And then I also included other people in the book. So there's co-authors and they have added their stories around, some of them around stories of adversity and how they overcame it and how they are successful in their own ways now, whether that's through business or life or what they've overcame. And then again, there's other people that have put in from their kind of business background, how they were able to support people with their mental health and well-being as well. So it's, it's a beautiful book, if I may say so myself, that you can just lift any time and take from it what you need you don't need to read it from start to finish there's all the different chapters one might be on self-belief or limiting beliefs or ways to well-being there's all different chapters in it that just leaves it an easy read but full of wisdom and thoughts around mental wealth oh I love that I'm like mental worth there's so many things that you just said that were like like little light bulbs going off of like the self-esteem piece, this, like we've attached our worth to so many of the wrong things that I'm, I kind of want to know, like in this book, like how do we build up that? I don't know, bank. I want to call it like this bank of like good (laughs) energy. I don't know any other way to say it, but I'm sure you have a better way to say it, but how do we start building up that bank of worthiness or feelings when we're really stuck? Because that's the key of to success, right? Is our mental health, our mental wellness is going to be as far as our businesses can go. Well, you can't really have a success without feeling mentally well or building that resilience. And I absolutely adore the fact that you called it a bank because that's what I alluded to. And that's why whenever I actually done a TED talk on mental wealth and that's what I talk about, a bank and building your vault full of wealth of mental health and resilience. And whenever I'm talking about that, I'm talking about as what I've said already. It's in the things that we do consistently. So I can give, and that's why the book is wrote in all different chapters. It goes from one to the other. It's it's for everyone. That is why. And nowhere in it, it says you must do this, 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 and this, and you're going to become, you're going to have optimum mental wealth. However, I do believe that it is being consistent and the things that we do every day. So if you think of the five ways to well-being, and there, there's all different thoughts around this, just for a basic, and it's in the book as well, just for a basic level of well-being. If you were to go for a walk with your headphones on, listen to a podcast, and then meet a friend and buy them a coffee, you have hit all five ways to well-being, potentially in one hour of your day. And there is research and suggestions especially here with the public health agency that states that those five ways to well-being are what will keep you well. So connect, be mindful, give, always learning and physical activity. That's your five ways to well-being. So what I try to do is show people how we can incorporate this into our daily lives because the key genuinely is finding what works for you, making time for you and doing it consistently. 
Oh yeah. And that's the hard part. I think that to me, the first thing that comes up is like hustle culture. Like this is, yeah. this is like the, the fix to help to hustle culture is this, is those five steps, but we feel like those five steps until we have that bank account worth, then we can't focus on these. So I'm sure that's part of the stories in your books too, is that we've associated again, like this money mindset, like this is a, we're a business podcast here. We have a lot of entrepreneurs and we're looking at like hustling and hustling and working. And our worth is once that bank account number hits there, but at what sacrifice? And there always is a sacrifice. It's that whole yin yang. But I suppose we all need money. And and having a life where you have financial freedom definitely makes things easier. However, it can't be how you define success. Success to me is freedom and choices. So whether having financial freedom is a lovely part of that, but it's also having the freedom to choose, the freedom to set boundaries, the freedom to have time for myself to do whatever it is and make those choices for myself. And that's how I feel that I my worth is not determined by external factors. And I there's so many things that influence that at the minute. And it's hard not to. And it's certainly that culture. If you see people, I'm on the hustle and this is how it goes. And if you go on three hours sleep a night and this is the lifestyle you can want. I mean, it just depends what success is. I truly believe there is there is treasure in resting as well. And quite often, like, I mean, I run my own business and there's, there's some days are longer than others. But and it's about choices as well. So whether you want to say it's about balance or whatever it is, but I get to choose. And there is an element of freedom there as well, where I can prioritize, where I can prioritize things. But I have to admit, Sometimes it's the days that I rest that the biggest things happen. Yeah. There is yeah. so much power in rest. Yeah. Yeah. And like and even to allow yourself and I talk about this quite a lot as well. People say to me, What do you do? What do you do? So first thing in the morning, I I go on, it's called a five, five, five. So it's five minutes of meditation, five minutes breath work, and five minutes journaling. So at a very basic level every day, now that's the basic level, I will do that. That sets me up for the day. I reset myself. I'm breath work is amazing, especially in any situation if you learn to breathe. But especially if you're a baby person if you're in business if you have a lot of home commitments and breath work can only help you to succeed in whatever it is that you're trying to do and then obviously the meditation and journaling but taking the time years ago people used to say to me I don't have time to meditate if you're telling me in business that you don't have time to meditate you need to do it twice as much because it it's like collecting your thoughts, trusting yourself, listening to your intuition to make those decisions in whatever it is that you are doing. It's really important. And I think that I know for me, that's one of the places that I get scared is that, yes, the meditation and like that, that rest time is so critical, but I'm afraid for me, like if I slow down, I might stop. Yes. <laughs> I, I would imagine you won't. However, I get what you're saying. So that feeling that we quite often get, and I'm going to generalize it here because maybe not everybody does, of that overwhelm because we've got so much to do. Now, I love lists, so I write lists about everything. I've got lists for lists because there is something to do with getting it out of your head and on. And I physically mean with a pen and a piece of paper. I don't mean typing it into anything. There is definitely theories around it's called a brain dump or getting it out of your head and putting it down a paper you're more likely to actually do it but to sit with here we'd have a cup of tea or a cup of coffee and write your list is every bit as productive as what you're going to do in fact you'll probably get more done by slowing down and writing the list and doing things like that to say sometimes slow down to speed up i i don't think and then, so the like of today, I had a huge to-do list. I didn't get everything done yesterday, and I knew I had things to do today. And here we're in Ireland, and it's really warm at the moment, which doesn't happen very often. 
and I went outside and just collected myself for about half an hour and I was the better for it and come back in and got more done so I had to do nothing to begin to do something <laughs> and it's really important yeah it yes I have to say like rest is something that I think we need to put more focus on especially in marketing because I just I see it all the time it's it doesn't ever it's starting to come out a little bit more in the last like year that rest is important, but I see so much of like, do more. Here's a new strategy. Here's a new, this, here's a new, this. And then it's all of a sudden your mental health and your well being things become part of your to-do list. So you're literally like, I see, I did it. I do it myself. It's on my list. I've got to do it. I've got to check it off, but you're not really doing it. You're just quote unquote doing it. So where's the living where, where's the freedom and the choices and the living and uh, work smarter not harder find what you need to support you and what you're doing and we are uh, we're social creatures and we're human beings and quite often people like to be asked things <laughs> you know it makes us feel good that somebody has asked us to help out and then reciprocate it we've definitely came away from that and definitely we're far more siloed where we want to work on our own for fear of telling people what we're doing and really that doesn't necessarily always work especially not in business you do need to have other people around you as well and I talk about that a lot about who you be intentional who you surround yourself with because it's equally as important to have those people that are going to help you grow that are going to challenge your thinking and then also people that practically can help you as well it's really important and then obviously try and not be around maybe people that are the other end of the scale as much but we had to think about that that you have to be conscious about that yeah that group that you surround yourself with, I never knew the power of it until I got rid of some toxic people from that circle. I was like, wow, this gets to be easy. Yes, I didn't know I needed that. And then to be able to say that even here, there was some people around you that were toxic or, or weren't for your better good. To be able to say that, uh, it's really important. And I only learned that as I got older as well. And now I talk about it and say to people, just be mindful, you know, who they are, regardless <laughs> if they're family or not. Unfortunately, sometimes again, choices. Yeah. So I want to know, there had to be a point in your career, in your life that you're like, I'm going to focus on mental health and this like wellness portion that goes along with, again, it touches every aspect of our life, whether it's our businesses, our health, our bank accounts, our relationships. When was it that you're like, this is where I need to focus because this is where I see the whole So it probably came in stages for me. So when I was... I was 19 whenever I was in college and I was put out on a placement and now that's many moons ago I have to say and I was put out in a placement and it was to support people who had mental health issues that were living in the community that needed this extra bit of support and it was actually in one of my local towns and I walked into the room and realized that I knew people in the room they were my neighbors there were people in my community they had families they were somebody's aunt uncle mom dad cousin whatever and the realization when I walked into the room I was like I didn't realize these people had mental health issues or indeed mental health conditions and yet they were they were coming here once maybe twice a week for that bit of extra support to allow them to remain independent in, commun in the community and then the realization there and then that it's everybody and it's anybody and that never left me even way back then I remember thinking this I did not know this this is unreal and then I seemed to just have a a natural flair for for supporting people for being kind of a straight talking solution focused compassion all those things I seemed I seemed to have those qualities so for years over two decades, as I said, I worked my way up and I managed mental health services. So I was very much part of the shaping of services, policy making, building new services, finding the needs in the area. And about two and a half years ago, I left and, and built my, I developed my own business, which is called Mental Wealth International. And the reason why I done that is because quite often 
by the time you got in front of me, you may have been on a waiting list for about two years and everything had fell apart in those two years. And I just realized it didn't, it, the systems maybe a bit, I don't want to criticize it, but it's a bit flawed. Maybe it's not doing what it's meant to do. So I truly believe then that I could create, I have a team around me as well, that we could create impact by going out out into places so we go out into workplaces and deliver mental health first aid we go out into gyms we go to construction tech companies car dealerships all these different places and we go out and deliver mental health first aid or workshops so it could be five ways of well-being resilience it's actually a success one and the idea is what is success to you and building your mental wealth around it and so instead of sometimes quite often when you're not feeling at yourself or something has happened in your life, it's very hard to reach out. It can be. No, it's hard for people. So while the message is lovely, we all need to talk and we do need to talk. However, a lot of people don't reach out and then it gets worse and worse. So creating that culture of well-being at work or in the gym, wherever it is, that there is readily or support readily available in that moment that you need it. That's really important to me. I can see the difference. I can see the difference when it's not there. And I can surely now see the difference when it is there. So that's why. Well, first, I'm just like, oh my goodness, two years. I could only imagine having to wait two years for Mm -hmm. some of like the mental health crises that I was in. I'm just like, I am. that's so cool that you're like, I see this problem. I want to make an impact in this moment, not two years down the line when this is snowballed into something that may or may not be manageable at that point. And that's exactly what happened. There was one lady in particular that really struck me and within, so she was brave and she went to her GP and the GP referred her to the community mental health team and the community mental health team assessed her and then got her a key worker. And then by the time the key worker got there, they assigned her onto the services that I managed. So she came in, it's a piece of paper, you come in and you're referred. And whenever she was sitting in front of me, I'll never forget it. In the space of those two years, her marriage had broke down. She lost her job. And I I believe, I have no evidence of this, but I believe I had the support of in there at the very initial stage. All that wouldn't have happened. And I remember when we peeled it back, she was grieving. It was grief. And grief causes so much emotional pain. It was grief. So in the moment, if somebody had a health space for that lady, in the moment, maybe, obviously I can't tell what could have been, but maybe things wouldn't have worked out like that. And a two-year waiting list just isn't good enough for someone not to for someone not to be able to recognize you're grieving, you're meant to feel that way instead of them thinking there's something wrong with me. Why am I feeling like this? It's me, what's going on? And then everything rolling. So you're right. It's in the moment. That's what I I try to achieve. Or as, And whenever we talk about mental health first aiders, because we train them, I you don't have to have all the answers. You have to recognize it, hold the space. Don't leave that person until you have a pathway of support and that's where the difference is made I feel in that moment yeah and having that support system just like going back to where you're like make sure that the people that surround you that support system is I I find it critical to anything and I noticed that when I was ashamed to say hey I'm not doing well because we're so trained to be like I'm fine I'm fine I'm fine But saying the words like, I need help, I need support, I'm not doing well was so scary that I put it off for years. So if people are already to the point where they're brave enough to ask for support, I'm glad that you've created a space for them to come for that immediate support. Yeah. And that's when it's needed. Or first, maybe someone to reach out to you and say, I've noticed maybe you're not, you're not you're not just at yourself and even though you may go no 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 everyone's fine I always encourage people to ask again because sometimes it's in the second ask that you'll get the true answer because the other person will feel the hard sometimes the hardest thing to do is ask for help not everybody's like that but I definitely find a lot of people coming in with mixed feelings around it and to be honest with you isn't it one of the bravest things that you can do is ask for help yeah 
I, I truly, mm-hmm. I truly, I will second that hundred percent, like yes. <laughs> ask for help, ask for support. And I think yes. it's okay to need support. It's okay to need these. Extra- Everybody does. Like you said, Everybody. we are community beings. Like we're meant to be in community and not do this alone. And it is so, it's so unfortunate the way things have went and even the young people now, and I'm not saying social media things like that is bad their communication style is even completely more different than than we and i read a book one time it's actually it's an american author it's robert Pittman, and it's called bowling alone and it's about how to say i actually have it here it's like that thick it's huge and it's about how society has changed and maybe not for the better that we're not really looking in for at each other anymore or that we're nearly afraid of the community because yes okay bad things happen but where do you find the middle ground and all of that there and it maybe doesn't serve society well and that's why I was like we need to do something different here certainly here but obviously we offer the support because online is so amazing we're actually able to offer the support all over and it's just a different way it's not a whole new concept it's just a different way of framing it and trying to think of it in a different way and building your mental wealth is packing your bank or your vault full of all these amazing resilient things that you have to withdraw when you need them because we all need it we all need it that's the truth I'm like, if one person says they don't need it, they're probably the person that needs it the most. That's the person. Yes. Are you okay? And that's a simple question. That's how I start my workshops. Are you okay? And I ask everybody in the room, whether there's 200 or 10, whatever, and everybody just be looking. And then I'll ask again and I'll say, it's really important to ask it twice. And where have we went from a simple question? Even whether it's in business, whether it's our personal lives forever, it's nice to be asked and it's nice to ask I suppose and it's the fundamentals of well-being and some of us have to work harder than others on well-being and that's okay but that's the point find what works for you find what fits into your lifestyle but whatever it is find it yeah and maybe they can find it in your new book oh yeah <laughs> there is it is and that's what I was saying and I mean it's lots of wisdoms, lots of knowledge, and also some lovely personal stories and associations to different things that, that people go through throughout their life in their careers and things like that. So it, it is, and I appreciate you bringing it up. And um, if anybody happens to want it, you can get it on Amazon or KMD Books, and it's there for people to really. It's one of those books that you could just set beside you and lift when you need it, and just take from it when you want. And I think that. I love having books that are referenced like that, where you don't have to sit down and be like, man, I got to read this thing cover to cover, like pick what is necessary in that moment. Cause I think that's a huge thing. Like you said, mental health t- first aid kit. And I'm like, yeah, sometimes you need a band aid. Sometimes you need like <laughs> the splint. Sometimes you need the other thing. So I love that you've created this book to kind of be like a first aid kit via book. Yeah. And it gives, it gives, ideas but it also gives hope and it gives understanding and really it covers just so many different things and the idea of being and a mental health first aider you're right it's it's that initial that first point of reference and the book surely could be part of that it's just really important to uh, to always seek help however we can help ourselves too sometimes we need to take responsibility as well and and read what we need to read or listen to the podcast that we need to listen to I remember years ago I had a mentor it's actually a business mentor everybody should have a business mentor 100% and um, poor and I were talking I was talking about education and really wanting to upskill and look after my well-being at the same time and I was looking obviously at universities and different things and she says to me no no Emma podcasts audiobooks and TED talks are every bit as good and again it's what we're talking about it's those picking what you need and taking from it to whether it's for a different perspective to learn something new or for your well-being think different things are available to us we don't always have to go down the route that was always taken And I think that you brought up a powerful like connection here is the power of like your story and like I call it story, like 
well, everybody calls it storytelling, but the storytelling piece that actually allows you to connect and find that hope that piece that you were talking about. Yeah. And what a beautiful place to be. And there's vulnerability in telling your story or sharing your experiences with other people. But if we all learn to do it and get rid of the judgment or the fear of being judged and realize that energetically we're all connected and nothing really happens for no reason there's usually and they say you can only join the dots backwards so whether it's a good experience or a negative experience or a positive one it's learning it's all learning and if we're able to understand that we're all connected and if the ultimate goal is is peace and just acceptance of ourselves i think if more people realize that a lot more would be done. Things would be a little bit different, I would imagine. Oh, like that self-acceptance piece is so hard. And I feel like Mm -hmm. as soon as I stepped into entrepreneurship, it was like, oh my goodness, I have so much work to do. (laughs) It's like imposter syndrome. Where did this come out of? Because yeah, it's just the way we are. And our brain likes to trick us not every thought we think is true and that was one of the biggest realizations I surely had in life personally and in business that not everything we're telling ourselves is true our brain loves to trick us loves to bring us back to what we know not come out of your comfort zone tell you no 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 you're not good enough that's not for you challenge it all the time and that's why who you surround yourself with is so important because they're the people that you can borrow their belief on the days that maybe you don't have it. Or they'll say, look, that happened to me. Again, power of story. Connection is key. When that happened to me, this is what I done. Just you do the same and keep going. It's so important. Um, self-acceptance is probably one of the hardest things to do. But one of the, we all have our different sides. We all have our dark side and we all have this amazing side of us as well. It's what you nurture. It's what you feed. And I think when once you, I check in on myself all the time, I call myself out. I call, I actually call myself out going, Emma, what even are you at? Or that's not you. Or stay true to yourself is powerful. Nobody can touch that. Yeah. I love that you call yourself out. I want to, like, that makes me want to put like a little sticky note or like a little pop up on my phone that goes off every once in a while. Like, Jen, what are you thinking? I'm calling you out. <laughs> Because I think that one of the things that I noticed with mental health, especially in the last few years of like things have really been shaken up and I struggled before was that you're not normally surrounded by your people. And especially if you're working for yourself, it's really easy to get in one little cycle of like, here's a thought and here's another thought and here's another thought. Now you're so far in the middle of your comfort zone that getting up from your desk to use the restroom seems scary because that you don't have time for that pause (laughs) and that's why working working on your own or even in small teams is what especially being I don't think people understand that the depth of being an entrepreneur and really or it's quite a lonesome place at times but it's lonesome if we allow it to be and this is where I call myself out because Today, I had a conversation with someone that I hadn't anticipated having a conversation with and completely solved the problem in my head. And then that made me realize, talk to people, (laughs) talk, even if it's just over a cup of coffee, you don't necessarily have to go with an issue, but just connect or talk like a conversation that was completely about something else ended up solving an issue that I was having within my business. And I was like, it's, it's just another reminder. Call, check in on yourself, call yourself out and connect with people instead of, because how productive are you going to be if something's going round and round and round in your brain? You're not. <laughs> That's like the key to procrastination <laughs> and so self-destruction. So get up off the chair. <laughs> yes. So you need, when you think you can't move from your laptop or your desk or whatever it is that you're doing that's when you need to you need to do the opposite of what you think you can't do that's probably true for most things in life it's surely true in business 
Yeah. Got to redirect those thoughts and catch them when they're happening. Oh my goodness. There's like, there's so many things here that we could take away. And this is why it's so important to focus on mental health. And not only that, but as you're saying this, I'm like, this is the solution to everything because a lot of us are trying to market. So we're going out there, we're creating content, we're creating content, but what's the key to creating a successful business? That connection piece having those conversations. It's not about like the sea of content. It's about connections and conversations. And I think that's something that I keep hearing you say over and over again. It's like in our business, in our life, those conversations, you just had a conversation with somebody unexpected and it solved the issue. Those conversations are where the success is built, where the happiness is built, where that piece that you get to, I hate to say it's a balance because I feel more like it's a teeter totter <laughs> than a balance, but you get to like play on the teeter totter instead of get sick by the teeter totter. Yeah. Instead of getting sick by it. Like I believe if you work on yourself enough and show up authentic and do the work, your self-acceptance, all of that, it's not easy. It takes a lot of time, but also connect, connect with other people regardless of what your business is, as long as you're intentional about what you're doing, it quite often works more than not. Yeah. I mean, that's it's for good. me, everything that I've purchased, everybody I've worked with, it's because I've connected with them, not because of yeah. some pretty graphic or something. It's that story. It's that connection. It's the conversation. Yeah. And then it creates that energy and everything else just flows when you're in your and when you're in your true state. Because if I'm asked to do something and I say yes, which I would have done in the very early days, yes, oh yes. And then you're feeling bad because it's not aligned, and then you're getting resentful because you really didn't want to do it and it's not what you're trying to achieve. It just ends up a bit messy. So it's really important to take the time to, to just to make sure and check in on yourself. Yeah. And like you said, it doesn't have to be a long time. Like you use 15 minutes in the morning. If you don't have 15 minutes in your day, you are lying. It's one of those times you need to check in with yourself and be like, hey, that's a lie. You're calling everybody out. Everybody has got everybody's got longer than 15 minutes. But if you're comfortable with that's all you're gonna you're gonna allow yourself, that's okay. But but get it in. And I mean it's free, it's on Instagram, it's a lay, you know what I mean? It's whatever or whatever platforms you want to use. It doesn't have to cost everything in it, but be consistent with it and give it time when you're trying, whatever it is that you want to, whatever it is that you want to do. I mean, some people go swimming, some people go for a 30 minute walk every day, maybe an hour. Like I hit the gym, it's good for my mindset. I feel stronger of mind and physically, but definitely of mind when I do that. Playing cards, whatever it is, find it. And to know how you know that it's working, you lose track of time when you're doing it. You lose track of time when you're doing it. That's good for your soul. So good for your soul and so feel good to fill up that like internal bank. Yeah, you got to have a full bank to be able to give. <laughs> you do. And that's why I suppose the idea of mental wealth just came from fill your bank, deposit into it when all of the time so that when you need something extra, you can withdraw and, and that really. And I love the fact that you... You mentioned that at the start because I hadn't mentioned it and you mentioned about the bank and that is, that's the idea around it. Yeah. And I think that for me, like it makes sense because it's like when we have enough, when we've built enough, like actual dollar wealth, like monetary mm-hmm. wealth, we can give back. Like it always yes. feels good when I have extra and I'm like, oh, look, I can donate more to the horse rescue this month. Like mm-hmm. I can give to that per- family that's on the corner. I can go buy them a couple bags of groceries. Yeah. It's the same I'm feeling like when we build up this like mental wealth is kind of like our own well-being and that energy inside that we can say, oh, look, I've got this little extra piece I can give to you. Yes. Isn't that beautiful? Like you, you put that so well. Absolutely. A hundred percent. That's what it's all about. Yeah. So where can people find you? Because I know you have like multiple books, which congratulations for writing books. Way to be vulnerable. Put yourself out there and create a piece of the mental wealth. What do we call it? First aid kit. That was it. 
my yeah. brain had a, had a moment there, yeah. but where can we find everything so that we can stay in your space? So that like mm-hmm. people that are really struggling, like, Hey, I want this mental wealth. Like I need this in my <laughs> life. Like, where can we find you? And we all need it. That's the thing. So I'm across most socials. It's called Mental Wealth International. So you get me on Facebook, Emma Weaver, on LinkedIn, on Instagram as well. I do nice wee videos just talking about different topics around mental wealth as well. And then uh, my website is mentalwealthinternational.com. So, I mean, if people wanted to understand how they can avail of mental health first aid or any of the workshops we can do them online. In fact, a lot of people prefer online because it means lots of different people from different departments can can come. But we also do them face to face as well. So it's really important. I also done so my books you can get on Amazon. So the blue line is about IVF. So I'm one of these people, Jennifer, will talk about the things that nobody wants to talk about. <laughs> so I will talk about IVF and also mental wealth that's my other book as well and then just to drop it in i've done two ted talks so one on ivf and one on mental wealth which encapsulates what you and i've just been talking about that you picked up on so amazing so i do appreciate that oh and i'm like those ted talks i'm like the elusive ted talk that i've been never (laughs) i'm like it's on my list someday but i just want to say like how incredible it is that you have stood behind like what you've you've learned what you've gone through through your story and you've put them out on powerful things like podcasts ted talks created books and you're really creating what i call those tsunamis because you're able to touch more people with these because you were brave enough to be like I, people don't like to talk about this i'm going to talk about it yeah. <laughs> And I really appreciate you saying that because it is vulnerable. It's yourself with your own book. But I kind of take me out of the equation. I hope that doesn't sound silly. I recognize that if people had it, like when I wrote The Blue Line, if I had had that book when I was going through it, it would have helped me. So I knew if it would have helped me, it would have helped other people. And that's the idea behind it. So taking me out of the equation. And then it seemed a little bit sad to have all this wealth and knowledge and understanding of over two decades and not at least try and and support people with their mental wealth and explain the concept of what it is that I'm trying to achieve is the mental wealth. Oh, I love, I'm like, I need to start filling my bank up. (laughs) Yes, you do. We all do. I mean, sometimes it's better than others. So, I mean, I'm not saying I'm amazing at it all the time, but it's definitely part of my daily, my daily living to always do something. Yeah. I think I'm like, I think about like what I do for myself every day. And I'm like, I go for two walks every day, but I do that for my dog. It's at my dog's pace. Cause she likes to sniff. It does get me outside and I've learned to use it as like, I do slow walking. So I'm mindful walk and I look at all the new flowers that are coming out. So it does met like, but I need something that like moves my body. I need to get back into like sitting with my thoughts. I'm not going to call it meditation. Cause for some reason my mind has an aversion to that word. <laughs> But now, when I talk about meditation, it could be sitting in the kitchen. It's not, I don't meditate listening to music and going into meditation, is just time out. Yeah. And breath work. You mentioned thoughts. breath work. Yeah. And I'm I like, I gotta. Work. Yeah. Do you have a, a favorite? So it's on what I do every morning. It's 7 a.m here in ireland and it's called the 555 and he does it live he's live doing it so you're getting the essence of the day or whatever and it's five minutes breath. he talks you through it five minutes breath, and he does it with you so when you're journaling he's journaling and things like that there it's called 555 club it's and it's free and it's community and it's there and i don't necessarily know the people on the call but everybody kind of says morning you know and things to get so gets rid of the loneliness straight away too there's other people connection it can be in all different forms but I know Wim Hof obviously is the biggest one but I yeah I've probably meditated a good 20 minutes from start to finish one time and it's tough it's hard so the five will do in the mornings (laughs) and you've made it yours and that's what's important that's what I'm taking away from this is it doesn't have to look like anybody else's as long as it's what's working for your mental health and well-being yeah 
and consistently do it consistently at least try and when you know what's working is when you lose track of time when you're doing it but also if you stop doing it and you start to feel a wee bit different and you're like oh why am I feeling like this why are these thoughts or why don't I feel as confident and then you realize oh I've stopped doing that go back and start doing it again whatever it is yeah Oh, I love this. And I love this conversation. And I'm so excited that you're sharing this with me. I've got like so many good nuggets and I know everybody else does, but I have to know if somebody were to walk away with just that one thing that they took with them in this moment, maybe this week or maybe a lifetime, what would you want that to be? Oh, it genuinely is you do you is huge. And I have a nice VC and I say it's actually in the front of the book as well. It's believe in all that you are to become all that you can be. 